guys and gals, welcome back to the Laugh Daily Podcast. We're excited to talk about today's subject, fingerboarding. What? We're here with our esteemed guest, the <laughs> professional himself. Isaac. Hello. The fingerboard legend himself. <laughs> the man who has reintroduced us to fingerboarding. It's a pleasure to have you what here. What an honor. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. So, fingerboard's making a comeback. Oh, really? Yeah. Short story. Pretty short story. Andrew and I <laughs> used to fingerboard back in middle school when we were living next to each other. Oh, my goodness. That's the story. I don't think anyone ever called it like fingerboarding back then. It was just tech deck. Tech deck. Yeah, I never heard of fingerboarding until Isaac came on the team. And as soon as you showed a trick, <laughs> I was hooked. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that's most people's experience with it still. Like older generation like oh yeah i used to play with tech deck back in the day don't, they still don't know what can be accomplished on a fingerboard yeah it's nuts i'm let me see that yeah because <laughs> a tech deck is just like a mini skateboard and that's not really what a fingerboard is kind of because the tech decks just have this sandpaper grip tape it's yeah. not designed really to work well with your fingers it's just like a little dinky toy but these these are designed specifically to do tricks, to land varials, and they have foam grip, and it's just so much better. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Whoa. Everything about a actual pro fingerboard is night and day from Tech Deck. Everything's more expensive. This board alone that we have that we shot for a video costs over a hundred dollars. Whereas you go to Target to buy a Tech Deck, you're gonna spend like less than five bucks probably. But Isaac has a lot to say about Tech Deck versus fingerboard. Uh. I know you do, because when we say tech deck, you're like, yeah! No, 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 no. Yeah, you almost blew a brisket out of your head. Why don't you use tech deck? <laughs> Which is a brand. I, yeah, okay. I definitely respect tech deck. They made fingerboarding, like, mainstream. They got fingerboards in the hands of, you know, school kids around the world. I think if they had started with, like, the foam grip, fingerboarding might have taken off a little faster because the the sandpaper grip although like looks like a real finger uh, real skateboard it's actually incredibly hard so i'm always impressed when people can do legit tricks with an actual tech deck the the reason i don't use tech deck is cuz once you've used like a professional setup the difference is humongous the feel of the wheels the trucks the board like it's it's like it's like a walmart board like a Walmart skateboard compared to like a professional skateboard setup. That's how, that's the best way yeah. I can compare it. So it's worth it for you to spend a hundred dollars oh, yeah. rather than just a $2 tech deck. Oh yeah. Oh, definitely. For him. But what would your recommendation be if someone wanted to get into fingerboarding? They've never used anything before. Mm. Do you think they need to spend a hundred and whatever dollars on this? No, there's <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Um, <laughs> There's definitely some good entry level fingerboards for like twenty to thirty dollars, and F Tech Deck is kind of catching on to the fact now that fingerboarding is becoming more than a toy, and there's like people who have like higher standards for their boards, and so Tech Deck themselves is now producing a performance series, which is a little better than a normal Tech Deck, and then a Pro series, which is like seventy dollars, I believe, and that's like. So you have performance, which is 30 and then pro, which is 70. And so those are both good options to start without having to go mm. full in there with a $120 setup. Yeah. So when Isaac reintroduced us to the fingerboarding world, I w I've never seen anybody do really like legit tricks on a fingerboard and be like actually good at it. Isaac brought his board and we just tell him a trick and he could do it. No problem. Which is insane. <laughs> We'll, we'll he could do it now. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we we'll show you guys. We could. Isaac, just show some of your best tricks. Wait, wait, wait. But we can but cut to it in a minute. Okay. Yeah, we could cut. <laughs> okay. But we can still do it live. A couple. Okay. You said it. But, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, whoa. Wait, wait. What's going on? We don't want to jump the gun here. <laughs> no, we don't. Because <laughs> anticipation. You said something interesting. Oh. You what said was it? that tech deck, well, they're catching on to the fact that fingerboards are more than a toy, which sounds like a cool motto for a fingerboard company. Oh, more than a toy. Yeah. Is that not? Oh, yeah. I think there's more like a, a I think there might be a short film like fingerboard documentary called More Than a Toy or something. Oh, dang it. Bigger so you toy, stole that. You could still use it as something. a as a model for a company. Yeah. It's not trademarked. <laughs> Man. More than just a toy. Yeah. yeah. So we made a video on J2 Studios, a budget challenge where we made fingerboard parks. And that video 
to my surprise, is our best video in months. Clearly, it's making a comeback because oh, I yeah. upload, we, Isaac's like, we He's totally, just, we totally need to do this idea. And I'm like, oh yeah, it sounds fun. Let's do it. It'll be another like average video. He no, was no, no, all no. in. He's oh like, yeah, I know this video is going to do well. We should do it, fellas. I knew it. For, How'd you know that? For so many years, fingerboarding has been a very like internet based sport, just because it's such a small niche that everyone's all over the place. And there's only recently has there been like a growing in like a community and people actually meeting up to do it. Um, and so it's been very like forum based, YouTube based, so social media based. And so like fingerboard videos, I've been watching them since I was a kid and they just like, if it's a good one, it, it gets a lot of views. I love reading all the comments in that video too. A lot of people saying how, yeah, nostalgic of, I used to use tech tech when I was growing up. This was mm -hmm. so fun to watch or even just kids who might not have used even tech tech yet were like, I got to get me a fingerboard. Yeah. This is sick. Yeah. And you even mentioned like tournaments and whatnot. Like it's a sport. Oh yeah. And you've gone to some of these tournaments and competed. Yeah. Yeah. How, how was that? How'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> That's the crazy thing is you guys think I'm really good, but then I go like to a, like a, the USA FBL is like the U S fingerboarding league. And it like travels around, uh, to different States every year. I placed eight out of 10 in my like park run and because the guys there are just insane how, how does like the competition work is it like you just have to is it like horse like if i do a trick then you have to do it and if you don't do it that's called i skate. think you mean skate Come oh on. i'm in basketball <laughs> terms yeah this is a fingerboard skateboard <laughs> Sorry, podcast skate. <laughs> how does it work there's a there's five different competitions there so they have it's basically like sls which is like the skateboarding like competition um and so they have a park best run park best trick uh vert best run vert best trick and then they have a game of skate tournament so yeah they, you do that oh. as well so you got overall eighth after doing all those i did i got eighth i only competed in the game of skate and then the park best run and i came eighth out of ten in park still which good. was which is embarrassing embarrassing you weren't last <laughs> i wasn't the last if we would have went we wouldn't have been on the radar at all <laughs> <laughs> yeah so guys ever since we've been talking about and like we each have been monkeying around with these fingerboards at work and you even got your own and been i got my own donut board mm -hmm. i post some clips on instagram so mm -hmm. some of you have probably seen those who are watching the podcast but it is actually a lot of fun yeah and so we were curious if we were to ever make our own fingerboards would you guys be interested in owning one for yourself what and if so, oh. how much would you want to spend on a fingerboard? Because you got the low tier, like we were talking. Tech you tech. can't say a dollar because we can't make money. That's yeah, ridiculous. Like, <laughs> if we're gonna make fingerboards, we got to make money. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but like, what's your max amount that you're like, I could invest in this concept and have fun at it? Mm. One note, I'll I'll add to the mix. I have not enjoyed Tech Deck, the cheap boards, because I got one and. For whatever reason, I don't know if I was doing something wrong, but like every time I do tricks, I'd have to like tighten the bolts because the bolts would fall off. Mm -hmm. And if the bolts fall off and you have no tool, mm -hmm. well, you can't fingerboard anymore. I we've had this board for months. I've thrown it around, done so many tricks, nothing's fallen off, nothing's mm -hmm. broken. I mean, it is like top tier condition. So yeah. Yeah. like even my board, off of Isaac's recommendation, I got some new wheels. It's just cool how there's like specific companies who specialize in fingerboard parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What like, a world. What? Anyway, I got some sick new wheels and those things are so much better because the ones that came with would always jam up and they wouldn't even roll anymore. Mm -hmm. I'd just be gliding or scraping across the ground. But the new ones, they got like bearings and they're, they can't so be stopped. How much total did you spend on your own personal custom board? Okay. So I got a P rep board off Amazon, which I think was like 20 bucks, maybe 25 bucks. I'm just using the grip it came with. And then I got new wheels, which were, I think, like 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe a $40, $45 setup. And man, it is, oh. So the wheels, <laughs> really the grip tape the grip and the tape wheels, wheels are the most. Yeah, because personally, I don't like this grip as much as the one that just came on my standard deck. Really? Yeah. What's the difference? I don't know. This one just feels like more firm. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's better for a pro but for me starting out, the one I got is like a little bit more squishy and it's like, I don't know. It just feels way better. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I like that grip. So that, that stuff is called black velvet 
And it's made by, I think, the Fingerboard Connoisseur. And it's got more of a rubbery feel, whereas I think the P-Rep ones have like a little bit of a foamy thing. And so I think that's the cool thing about fingerboarding is there's different like different trucks have different like tightnesses. The wheels, you can get polyurethane wheels, which are softer or plastic wheels, which are harder, depending on how like grippy you want it. There's different like grip tapes that have different feels. And so there's no like right or wrong way to set up your board. It's kind of all preference and you mm -hmm. figure it out by just trying different products, which is super fun. Plus these, these are these the urethane wheels? Yeah, those ones are urethane. Because these ones, I mean, listen to this. Oh, ow. <laughs> I love that sound. Oh, it's the sound of you landing a trick. <laughs> oh. it's like Rick hates on that sound. Chalkboard. Rick and Jackson get so angry at the sound of fingerboarding. Uh, and that was a little exaggerated, but you get the point. <laughs> yeah, that's the one annoying thing about fingerboarding is it is kind of like obnoxiously loud and annoying. Oh, yeah. Like if you're just anywhere in the house, it's just this constant click, <laughs> click, 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 click. Yeah. But at my computer desk, I have a mouse pad and I've been fingerboarding on that and it's way quieter. It feels smooth. So I'm like, that'd be, if they made a giant skate park out of that foam pad, it'd be a little less annoying. Hmm. That's my only problem with fingerboarding. Hmm. Well, we'll take that into consideration. <laughs> yeah. For the community. Yeah. So guys, if we were to make our own board, I mean, there's so many options. I've come across some really unique ideas in the fingerboard world. Hmm. One, have you ever heard of this, Isaac? Uh, maybe a not. A fingerboard that has shocks on it. So when you push it, it like it can bounce a little bit. Oh. What are your on the trucks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I I've tried those on an actual skateboard. They're kind of cool. I never seen them on a fingerboard though. That's sick. Yeah. It's huh. not actually a public made board. It was somebody who made it. Oh, okay. And I was like, dude, that'd be so cool cuz it seemed like a satisfying <clears throat> thing. Like when you're yeah. even if you're just riding, you kind of like get to push down. Yeah. But then it could also help you like with ollieing potentially. It seems like it would. Cause you got that already immediate pop. Yeah, get a little help. more pop on there. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So there's one innovative way you okay. can make a cool fingerboard. What's another one? Um, another. Well, it's not necessarily like design wise, but Andrew sent it in the group our group chat yesterday. Oh, yeah. Design innovation. Oh yeah, it was cool. Um, they had like a scratch off deck, so you scratch it all off, and it reveals a new design underneath. Mm. It was super cool. Uh, I don't know. It might be, um, I mean, obviously you could just scratch it off fully and get a new design, but maybe it's like as you're like using it and grinding and stuff, you're slowly revealing a new design. You mm -hmm. could do it that way. But speaking of which, this one actually has the uh, protection grinders on it, so you never glitch up your design. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> well, there's many. <laughs> well. Uh, guys, like... <laughs> I'm telling you, this world is so wild. I love finding these niches of things. Like, there's a fingerboard backpack for some reason. Look at that oh. thing. It's so small. You put your fingerboard in there and then, like, hang it on your keychain or something. Super unique, but, like, who would have thunk it? What do you put in here? Like, your little skate tool, maybe some extra wheels in case? Some I, bushings? I guess, yeah. <laughs> you don't use one gun. of those? I don't use one of those, personally. <laughs> there's a so the fingerboard cool. shop in yeah, denver but look you, yeah you can hook it onto your keychain and you've got this little to-go pack for your board i do have a little knot thing that i can hook to my belt and let that let it hang it's like a little simplistic so it just hooks to the trucks and just hangs there but i don't wear it all the time because you know it's a little dweeby looking <laughs> <laughs> but you could make it cool i could make it cool and i have made it cool sometimes i mean like yeah, i wonder if like the pro super pros like, you know, like when you go to, for example, disc golf tournaments, they got bags mm, full of tons yeah. of different boards. I wonder if the pros had come to tournaments with giant boxes full of fingerboards. Or like, like 12 ah. different setups. Like, oh, oh, for this course, I'm going to use the rare Ninder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they do. Yeah. <laughs> really? When, when you go to the league, there's there's guys there. It, the Denver scene, for some reason, is like insane. Like, they take it super serious up there. Like, I have a lot of fun with it, but I also recognize I'm like, it's a little mini skateboard. Like. You know, yeah. I just do it for fun. But there's some people who take it like legit, serious, serious. And they come with their like whole case. And it's like, I was playing one guy in a game of skate. And he's like, I don't know which board I should choose. And he like whips it open. He's like, hmm. <laughs> Dude. I'm going to go with this one. I've, I've been good with this one recently. I'm like, oh my gosh. I only, have, I, I only bring my one setup because I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> Dang, that's that. I mean, that's how you got to do it. Yeah. It sounds like a funny face off. They all got like, like it's fingerboard a dark room tattoos and, and that dude. <laughs> 
Mm. Which one? Isaac's just standing there <laughs> uh, awkwardly and nervously with his one board. Like, uh, <laughs> I only have this. I see it kind of because I also am a skateboarder, and so I see it kind of like skating. I don't have five different skateboards that I have set up. Yeah, I just have my one that I use. And it's great. I wonder. Do you know if the pros actually make like a living out of it, or is it just kind of like you make money? It's a side kind of gig. Um. The big, the, the main way that you'd be making money from what I know is if you like own a company. So like someone like Mike Schneider, who owns like flat face, he like, he's technically a pro. And so he's making a living off being a pro fingerboarder. But I assume most of his money is coming from like his company. Like he make like he employed both of his parents, I believe. And so he's got like a legit thing running out of his house. So then the tournaments, you're not making that much money. No, no, no. Not yet. Not Not yet. Just wait until it's an Olympic <laughs> sport. Yeah. Yeah. Or we host a tournament, winner gets 50K. Is that like, what's like the average? That'd be crazy. If you, <laughs> what's if the average you, prize money? Like a couple thousand dollars. Okay. Last, last. So maybe 10 K. Last okay, year. Yeah, maybe 10 K. Last year, I don't think there was money. <laughs> Is there trophies or like? Yeah, there's like medals and like different prizes. But don't you have to pay to get in? Yeah. So how could you lose money? Wait, who? Wait, what did you say? Huh? Never mind. No, I didn't say this. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be, that'd be nuts. Yeah, a fifty thousand dollar prize for a fingerboard competition—you'd have the whole world here. Well, yeah, I was looking up. Uh, I saw the world. Tech Deck, the two thousand eleven Tech Deck Championship. Mm. The the kid who won got five thousand dollars from, mm. and Tony Hawk gave it to him. Yeah, oh, it's account tech for deck. inflation. Yeah, maybe ten k. Yeah, so that's like <laughs> back then. That's probably pretty good. Yeah, especially for he was like in his teens. His kid, yeah, that's a good little payday for just a little hobby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's one of those things like skateboard, like professional skateboarders. Don't even make that much money. So never mind professional fingerboarders. Just wait till the, the scales tip where <laughs> fingerboarders are making way more than <laughs> that'd be actual nuts. skateboarders. That that's a day I'd love okay, to. Okay, so see. you like as a fingerboarder, you can make money through tournaments, your winnings, or mm-hmm. sponsorships potentially from companies such as maybe a Black River Ramps. Mm-hmm. Like these like Which companies that make these just obstacles and ramps that are just these are quality. Mm. Yeah, they're quality, but I got something to say about that. Oh, oh, oh. They are Oops. way too expensive Oops. for Aww. that. <laughs> Black River, in our fingerboard video, Isaac got like a bunch of Black River stuff and he spent like six, seven hundred dollars on a few ramps. I'm like, dude, Black River, no. You got to keep in mind though, they have like not a monopoly, but they are one of the main producers of like wooden ramps. There's not many companies that make quality wooden ramps. There's a few, but, but they can kind of get away with it because. Not everyone's doing it. Yeah, this, they're in our own market. Okay, so how Shoot, much was so this? We should ma- yes. Make we our should. own ramps? Yeah, and make them cheaper we could, we and could, better. We can make our cheaper, own ramps. Better. Cheaper, okay. better. Okay. It's a smart business model. I like it. Cheaper and better. Make our products cheaper than the competition. Make them better <laughs> than the competition, and then you win. That's yeah, how, how you, you lose. You can't. Because, like, how much was this? Do you remember? Like, off the top of your head, how much would, like, an average Black River That ramp? one looks... Uh, that one was probably like 50 bucks. Are you sure? I'm pulling. Definitely not more than that. 50. I don't know, dude. This you didn't like get one that of the many bigger ones, though. You didn't get that many ramps. How on earth did you spend 700 bucks? You got quite a few things. Yeah, I got, I got quite I a few like, of them. Yeah. I mean, it's a big part. Uh, we'll, we'll pull it up. Um, yeah, I'm pulling anyways, it up. <laughs> concrete ramps are a little cheaper because they're a lot easier to make. You just need a mold and just pour the concrete in. And so there's a lot of concrete companies out there that sell like, you know, $20 obstacles like you could get something like this in concrete not that big oh see yeah. that's the difference that's the thing because that would probably break for sure <laughs> look at this this was a concrete just curb that isaac chucked at the wall wait i don't could, no i didn't yeah you did because you couldn't land a kickflip what? <laughs> <laughs> and look it snapped in half so yeah it sucks that was oh, a I, I like the little sticker like no fingerboarding here mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's, yeah like that <laughs> it's okay oh. i found some obviously bl- Black River is, uh, they manufacture their stuff in Germany. Mm-hmm. Found this oh. one. It is the Black River Playground Bundle XL. It has <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, about <laughs> six or seven obstacles. Uh, how much do you think that would be? The Playground Bundle? Like XL. Four. No, you can't answer. He has uh, to answer. Oh, I already know how much it is. Yeah, I was about to say. Uh, like, <laughs> like 450 bucks. That's pretty close. No, you're off. It's more. Oh, okay, like 600 bucks. Uh, more. It's six hundred and fifty dollars, and that's with a discount. Yeah, but the playground bundle comes with the playground, though. 
Because like, of the yeah, playground? I'm not saying, it's cool for sure, but I'm like, 700 bucks? They're made in Germany. Ah, $700. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. For that. As a kid, Black River was like my dream because, yeah, I couldn't afford anything. So the fact that we got so many Rams in here was like. Merry Christmas, Mar- Yeah. Marv. Yeah. Mm, yeah. As a kid, I for sure didn't even dream of having any Black River stuff. Okay. Grab the board. Do a trick. Oh. It fell on the floor. All right. So I do have a Band-Aid on my fingerboarding finger. On okay. your fingerboarding finger. Yes. Okay, we'll take turns. Yikes. Let's okay. I'll start. Let's start with an easy trick. Let's see just your average Ollie. Oh, he messed up the Ollie first oh, no. try okay, for a million on, bucks. Sorry. You hold blew on it. A minute. I'm moving this a little over. Okay. There we go. Uh, right. Solid Ollie. All right. Give us the kick flip. Oh. I can't even see it. I'm gonna move my mic. That's fine. You don't need to talk. Oh, Ooh. that was clean. Anything else? Um, oh yeah. Let's do a <laughs> a varial and land it in a manual. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh. That was nice. A, a, a backside heel flip. A back heel? Dude, what <laughs> we're gonna be here all day. I can't do everything every single trick on the fun. <laughs> you can at least attempt it and then decide what you want to do. <laughs> oh. Okay, he's landing. With his fingers upside down. No, not upside down. What is that? You got to fully. That's, this is a technicality thing. Some people, when they do backside tricks, right? They'll do the trick and then they'll f- just flip their fingers upside down like that. Bing. What you want to do is turn them around. So you don't want to flip them upside down because that's impossible in real life. You want to make it look like you're actually turning your body. Oh. Replicate like an actual skateboarding oh, trick. Oh, good call. So, like that. Ooh. Ooh. that was nice, <laughs> man. Put that in slow motion. <laughs> what What was the best trick you've ever landed? The best trick I've ever landed. You did something kind of cool recently on your Instagram, where it was like this weird, like flip the board in the air and hit it with your finger oh yeah like a crazy ollie north where it just goes like that yeah. uh i don't know i've landed so many crazy tricks the first uh, oh sorry <laughs> the, the, the recent one that i was most proud of was a like a switch flip front nose slide so it's like a normal kick flip except you're going in the opposite direction so you pop with your index rather than your middle finger oh and so you, you kick flip and then i caught it into like a, a little nose slide Mm. Whoa. It felt pretty cool. Real quick. Give us your top tips for an Ollie and then a mm. kickflip for the new people watching. Like, mm. I can't do that. I'll never be able to Ollie. Mm. Cause that's probably the number one reason I would guess that yeah. someone like gets a fingerboard and doesn't keep going because they try an Ollie for a couple hours and go, ah! Oh yeah. And then break their ramps. Oh yeah. And this is why this is why getting a board with at least foam grip is so important. If you're gonna try and learn them on a tech deck, it just makes it a lot harder. Um, the best tip for learning a kickflip is to learn an ollie, really. But to learn an ollie, um, <clears throat> the way I learned it is a long time ago now was actually on like a wall. So if you get like a a sideways surface and do them, so if you have a wall like this, basically what an ollie is is you're bringing it back on your finger and then leveling it out. So if you have a flat surface and just do this over and over again, oops, you'll eventually get the feel for it, and then on flat. Learning a faky ollie might help because you're ollieing going backwards and you're going with the momentum of your hand. And so popping it. Perfect. Pull it back. Pop with the little middle finger. Middle, uh, pop with the middle finger. Bring it back onto your fingers and level it out. And so as you're running up to an obstacle, you can do a little go backwards like that. And then over time, you want to get rid of that backwards momentum. But it can help you learn. I don't know if that was a good Ollie tutorial. I yeah. like it. I like it. But the, I, the wall thing, in my opinion, gives you the best feel for it. And then once you've learned the Ollie, all a kickflip is, is doing an Ollie. But instead of just leveling it out to here, you're going to flick your whole hand sideways off the front. So an Ollie, you level it out, bring it down. Kickflip, you level it out, but then flick, keep flicking your finger across and then 
you'll get the hang of like the different speeds. You can flick it faster. You can flick it slower, depending on how you want your kickflips to look. That was great. I expect everybody watching to be able to land ollies next week. Okay, class? Yep. I mean, I'm still at the beginning stages. I've landed a few kickflips. I'm getting better. Uh, but just like anything in life, it takes time. If you want to get good at something, you got to push through the mass amounts of failures at the very beginning. Because then it gets like annoying. You're like doing it and like, it's not working. But then it's just something clicks where you just yeah. push past that barrier. And you're and it kind of snowballs it. too. Because once you get the ollie down really good, and then maybe another week, it takes a mm-hmm. week and a half, two weeks to get the kickflip down really good. But then you start, if you introduce obstacles and stuff, you start just adding combos and like how you flow and all that stuff. And then you start landing all these tricks all at once. And you're like, whoa. Oh yeah. So the Ollie and yeah. kickflip take the longest. And then yes. once you have those two, you just keep learning tricks. Like I can learn a new trick like, like that because I have so many other tricks like muscle memory. So I'm like, okay, what if I just do that same trick, but now do like a, like a varial with it as well, like a body varial and land it that mm-hmm. way. So then it's like, you just keep unlocking tricks yeah. every time you. That's what's cool for me for fingerboarding. Well, two reasons. One, I think it's fun where you can bring that literally everywhere. Mm-hmm. It fits right in your pocket, like a smaller than your phone, especially when you're out, like even hanging out with friends or family. Like if we're out at dinner, I would much rather whip out the fingerboard and we're all having a good time mm. versus on the phone. Oh yeah. yeah like yeah. for me, like that's, oh, I don't know. I have so much fun with that. Oh yeah. yeah. And then second, it's like really goes into that creativity aspect of like, with the obstacles, it's like, I know how to ollie, but what if I did an ollie from here to here? Or I know how to almost do a 180 so I could, you know, land here and do a tail slide and then come off there. And then you can kind of be creative with different obstacles in real life. Like, oh, look at this bookshelf over here. Mm. Let me hit the tail slide on the, I don't know. It's just super oh, yeah. fun. Street fingerboard. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most surreal thing for me is the fact that I've been fingerboarding since I was 14 and I was like obsessed with it, but super alone with it. Like, I would just fingerboard in my room. I would like make little boards. So I'd be in the garage, like just making the making fingerboards and like the possibility that as a grown man (laughs) at 24 years old, I would still be fingerboarding, have a bunch of black river obstacles, have friends who fingerboard work for a company, be on a podcast talking about fingerboarding. Like, I would never have seen this coming. So this is the height of your career. Pretty much. I'm <laughs> pretty much peaking right now. Wow. That means it's all downhill after this. No. <laughs> no, it's going to keep going up. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love what you said about like at dinner, you'd rather like have everyone, whoever you're with, friends, family, be playing with something like a fingerboard mm. because it reminded me, this is the in the Bible in twenty verse 27, chapter 16, it says, idle hands are the devil's workshop. Mm. So if you're always doing something with your hands, you're kind of like, it's mm. kind of like it plays into that. Like fingerboarders don't being, sin as much. Be, well, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't twist. <laughs> but you know, if you're doing something, working with your hands, using your brain, and being creative in that way, other yeah. than just that mindless, mm. you know, scrolling and whatnot, oh, it's yeah. it's so good. I like that. Mm-hmm. And I, even ever since we made that video, the fingerboard video, Rick sent us a video in, in our group video chat of his son. Uh, he made a fingerboard out of Lego and he made mm. a, his own fingerboard park out of Lego. Mm-hmm. That's like so cool. Even just as an adult, seeing a kid do something like that, me and like, man, why aren't I th- that creative sometimes? Oh yeah. yeah that's cool. It's, that's a good uh, verse for a fingerboard company. <laughs> idle hands idle devil's hands. workshop Ooh, idle, idle hands that'd be a cool fingerboard yeah. company name idle hands don't steal idle that hands. oh yeah yeah that's copyright because you already said it yeah, so it's, you it's can't ours steal. now mm-hmm. that's how copyright Buy works it. I think that's why your park was so cool as well in the video was that you didn't have much to work with and you still made a pretty cool yeah literally I mean everybody at home could replicate that exact park for oh, yeah. five bucks oh yeah that's the and great you idea. can all those obstacles you can actually learn and get better at oh yeah and it was solid yeah. Well, you built it? The, I guarantee every fingerboarder who's been fingerboarding a while has had a uh, cereal box park <laughs> at one point. Ooh, in life. cereal box park. Oh, yeah. That sounds Whoa. cool. A big old cereal box mega ramp. Yeah. Yes. We've all had that for sure. <laughs> yeah. I love the creativity in the fingerboard world. I especially love watching like the Instagram videos of like professionals because how they film it with like the slow mos, it makes mm. it look so much cooler. Mm. And the parks that people have built, I'm like, dude, it makes me want to just like keep oh, yeah. being in this world. 
Mm-hmm. Micro world. Micro. Micro. I have a vision for our next video. We've already talked about it. Next fingerboard video of building this like massive like park world. Mm. That would be epic. And then what if we hosted our own first ever championship? Winner gets 10K. That'd be <gasps> sick, dude. You'd have so many people here. That'd be cool. I don't know about here, but oh, where not would here. we host it? Well, I guess we could here, but well, why? I don't know if we want to do it here. Yeah, we do. Oh, we do? Oh, yeah, we could do it on here on the J Stu property. Like in the warehouse. If we had the mega park built. Huh. Like Dude, the, we could deck out the warehouse, make it look so dude, cool. that'd be nuts. Oh, it'd be a nutty, have like food smoke truck. machines. Oh, With laser show. Would you guys get oh, into we got the laser show that did our live show. So yeah. it's like, do Oh, and it's sponsored by our brand new fingerboards tournament. Yeah. Idle hands. Idle hands. Idle hands are. Wow. So thank you for introducing us to this world. Do you have any future plans with it? Are you going to start doing tournaments or is this just fun? I for, I mean, whenever there is the competitions, I definitely compete. I would love to get sponsored, like just as a side fun thing. You can um, be the find the the dough bear first sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. Sure. Maybe we can make fingerboard more of a big deal. Because dude, I, like I said, I've been watching all these documentaries lately. I watched the last one I watched was this Rubik's cube documentary. <laughs> Who would have ever thought that there would be tournaments for Rubik's cube? It's crazy. Yeah. They have these giant conventions where all the kids are coming there and they're they're competing and then they have times and oh it's it look it made me like excited about it. I'm like, I'd never interested in Rubik's yeah. Cube because I can't do them. I'm like, this is sick. So That's cool. I I mean, this is on topic, but I've seen this person comment on every single video. I think it was on studios though. J Su Studios. Mentioning how it's like, well, I love you guys' this coffee, but I wish you would make a product or something more mm. geared towards like your younger audience. <laughs> to his point, I feel yeah. like these fingerboards, I mean, y'all let us know in the comments, but I feel like they could be, you know, more geared towards that. I've already had a bunch of DMs of like kids who say, I got into fingerboarding because that video, like any recommendations on products, like you'd make a video how to do it, like kickflip. And yeah, we're making impact in the fingerboard scene. We and could. It's pretty we cool. could do it. We're yeah, rising up the next slowly. generation of fingerboarders. Yeah, so we want to see your comments, guys. Engage with the other comments down below. If you like someone else's idea, thumbs it up so we can see it. But we'll we'll, we'll definitely be looking through the comments of this episode because we want to do stuff that you guys are excited for. Like he just said, we made coffee because we were excited about it. But some of you were like, ah, most of you probably like, I don't drink coffee. So it's like, ah, we don't really want that. And just to go back, also let us know what you would be willing to pay for a fingerboard. Like, what would your price range be? Are you 25 bucks? Are you like, man, I could drop 40 bucks on that, something that's like good quality. Mm. You'd be interested in that, whatever. Yeah, because when it comes to the price, like Tech Deck, they're able to do such a cheap price because they're making so many. Mm-hmm. But you pay for what you get. So if you want something cheaper, mm-hmm. you're going to get basic packaging, <clears throat> basic board. Something middle tier, maybe a little better packaging, a little better board. And then these, these $100 boards or even the Tech Deck pro series mega tier the 70 dollar board that they released was so cool because not only is the board epic and all of the like the wheels and everything are top tier but the box itself is a little like grind rail box ollie box Mm -hmm. so you don't you get like a box and a board so it's like what intrigues you about it yeah the amount you pay is definitely it's reflective of how long it's going to last because if you get cheap wheels with cheap bearings they're going to lock up pretty quick you're Nuts and bolts are going to be falling off all over the place on your trucks. <laughs> so <laughs> that's all been our experience. Yep, so yep, yep. not just saying that people underestimate like paying people underestimate the quality of their, they're like, why are they so much? But they make them, it does make a massive difference getting mm-hmm. premium brands. I can promise you though, we're not going to make like the cheapest possible, not the cheapest possible, but we want to do, ah, <laughs> <laughs> we want to make them accessible to as yeah. many people as we can. So I think that eliminates both spectrums. We're not mm-hmm. going to make $150 mega. ultra <laughs> mega premium boards because mm-hmm. you guys watching aren't going to drop 150 bucks on a new hobby right off the bat. Mm, yeah. But who knows? Maybe it's like, maybe we could even have two words. This is like the art entry board. Right? Yeah. So you get into it, but then once you're into it, then you can fully... Um, Ah, I forgot what the word is. <laughs> That's all right. I well, you can exactly upgrade. You can upgrade a cheap setup as well. Like if you have a a cheaper 
Ford, you can just throw some, like Andrew did, throw on some better wheels mm -hmm. or eventually get some better trucks, but keep the same deck so you're not paying. Yeah. I was going to say, you fully appreciate the quality yeah. of a better board. Yeah. Yeah, and like, let's say we launch this first board. It does really well, and then the demand's so high, everyone wants the new mega $150 board that comes with the ultra mega ramp mystery ramp i don't know <laughs> every mega board comes with a mystery <laughs> ramp <laughs> it's always a vert ramp it's just like this big yeah You're sick do you guys know when the first fingerboarding was uh, 19... documented on film 1960 i'm gonna go like 81 86 i believe it was in a powell 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 Peralta video. So it's like a skateboarding video and Lance Mountain, who was one of the skateboarders, mm. is like fingerboarding in a in a sink. And it's like just a like a B roll clip from the video. But it was the first time people had ever like really seen it like in the mainstream. It's pretty cool. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Right on. Well, on that note, <laughs> thanks for tuning in today, guys. As always, leave a like and uh thanks for being here. So that's all we got. Goodbye. Goodbye.